Good afternoon. The first item of business this afternoon is time for reflection. Our time for reflection leader today is Tim Maguire, a celebrant of the Humanist Society of Scotland. Presiding officer, thank you very much for inviting me to speak today. Now, members of the Scottish Parliament, I hope you would agree um, that the aims of politics and philosophy are the same, to increase happiness and well-being. Now, happiness is a nebulous concept, um, but there are those who believe they can measure it. And when the UN compiled its latest World Happiness Report, Scotland, as part of the UK, didn't even make it into the top 20, which rather begs the question, would Scotland be happier in a different political landscape? Well, you may say so. I couldn't possibly comment. Now, one Scottish city, however, is punching well above its weight in the happiness stakes. Two years ago, a survey found that Edinburgh was the happiest city in the UK, and only two months ago, Condé Nast Traveller said it was one of the friendliest cities in the world. Something has clearly changed. For generations, we were led to believe that life was a veil of tears, and earthly happiness a snare and a delusion. Happiness might be a reward in the next life, but only if you towed the line in this. Now, that began to change in 1776 when Thomas Jefferson, inspired by the writings of the Enlightenment philosophers Francis Hutcheson and David Hume, enshrined the pursuit of happiness in the American Declaration of Independence. Since then, we've come rather to regard happiness as a universal human right. But, and it pains me to say this, we Scots weren't the first to conceive this radical idea because almost 40 years earlier, halfway across the world, in the tiny Himalayan kingdom of Bhutan, the legal code decreed if the government cannot create happiness for its people, there is no purpose for the government to exist. Bhutan remains one of the poorest states in the world, but for 40 years now, it's inspired governments everywhere to look beyond GDP as a measure of a nation's health. Because Bhutan, in 1977, I think, was the first country to measure gross national happiness. And now we're all doing it. Uh, just last week, the Office for National Statistics revealed that the happiest place in the UK is for manor, uh, while Londoners remain amongst the most miserable people in the country. But the paradox of happiness is that we only find it when we're searching for something else. And I think the 19th century humanist philosopher Robert Ingersoll put it best, as he said, happiness is the only good, and the way to be happy is to make others so. Members of the Scottish Parliament, may you find happiness by making the people of Scotland happy. Thank you for listening. The next item business is...